Hi, I'm James and in this video I replace the bushings in the upper control arm, uh, also called the wishbone of the van. Um, so I take everything off, I do a bit of welding for the first time and don't die, and then I put everything back together again. Uh, so please keep watching if you want to see that. So this is the upper control arm, yeah, it's also called a wishbone if someone asks you about that. Um, it's attached to the van in two places, so one is uh, attached to the upper ball joint on the steering knuckle, so just there, that one. Um, there's two hex bolts that go into there, so we need to take that off first. And then we need to undo this long bolt that goes all the way through the wishbone, and there's a nut on the end there, so we take that off and slide that out, and then the whole thing will come free. Now, the, the two bushes we're replacing on either side, and I'll just show you on this other page a bit of closer look. You'll see that they're actually welded in, in place, they've got spot welds on either side. And what we need to do is grind those off, and then we'll be able to knock them out, then fit the new bushes and then weld them back in. Now, I've never done welding before, so we're going to see that in this video. So hopefully I can do some spot welds, um, but yeah, you'll see that later on. Now, what I've done is gone for this PowerFlex kit. Now, I wouldn't recommend paying for the PowerFlex kit normally because they're really, really, really expensive for what you get. Now, um, for each side and each of the bushes that you buy, the normal ones, they're about £15 each. So to do the, both sides, both wishbones, both sides, it's going to cost about 60 quid. I got these uh, this set for £80, so £20 more, uh, and I managed to get the whole set, so I thought that was that was worthwhile, the fact that uh, the sleeves are stainless steel and they should last forever and ever and ever. Um, the other benefit of the PowerFlex is that when you're fitting this into the wishbone and you're doing that spot weld, it's okay to get this really, really hot. Now, some people have found that when they're doing the spot welds on their new bushes, they're melting the inside and causing damage to them. So that is one benefit of using the PowerFlex kit. Um, but cost-wise, at its normal price, it's really, really expensive. So if you can afford it, do it, but otherwise, don't bother. Um, I've also got these um, uh, these washers. So these are the eccentric washers that the bolt slides through. So they, they go on to that. And that sets the camber of the wheel. So how the wheel goes this way and that way. Um, so I've got some more of them just in case mine are really rusted and knackered. Um, and these are, again, stainless steel and they've been precision engineered, apparently. So there we go. Um, it's quite straightforward, this one, um, to actually get it off. Um, the welding is going to cause the problem for me, I think, but we'll give it a go and see how we get on. So here's the wishbone. Um, there's two bolts that go through here into the upper ball joint. Obviously it's removed at the moment because I'm redoing the whole of this, but you'll have to take those two off first. And then that will allow you to move this up and down freely. Um, you'll see on this side, there is a, see in there. On that side is a hex um, head of the bowl. And it goes, runs all the way through uh, and then comes out this side. Uh, there we go. And that's a 19 millimeter nut on the end there. Uh, and that's what we need to remove. And then we'll slide the bolt out. Underneath here, when I lift it up, you'll be able to see so all of this is the bush, so we're replacing all of this and that part as well. And they're welded onto the, uh, the wishbone. What you'll see here is the eccentric washers. So they go all the way around and they slot into the, the slotted bolt. Um, so it's on this side and then we've got one on the other side as well. There we go, you see it there. So what we need to do is mark the position of where it is at the moment. So then when we put it back on, we can set it to the same place. So I'm just going to use a punch and just mark on the body um, and on the washer. So what I'm probably going to use is, you see that little indentation on the bottom there? There's like a little dip. I'm just going to mark it against that. Um, so then I can reset it at the same place. You can see uh, the bush is all cracked right at the end there where it's all black. So I think it was time for these to, to be replaced, I think. These are probably the originals that came with the van in 1990. So yeah, um, let's uh, mark the washers and then we can remove the bolt. So hopefully you can see that. There's a, in the bodywork here, there's an indentation. So what I'm gonna do is mark the washer just next to that there. Yeah, so hopefully you can see that. I've marked the washer just there against the indentation. So I should be able to refit it and set it the same position. 
Uh, next is to remove the 19 millimeter nut. So I'm going to put some uh, penetrating fluid on that um, and then uh, just unbolt that. So just be careful of the brake line here and then this is going to move across. the wishbone out of the way that just comes completely off just gonna pull that out there we go so that's that side and what I'm gonna do is put them back onto the bolt um, as I take them off so I remember which way around they go and I'm just gonna get the other side goes that way. So I'm just going to fit them into here. So the bolt came out like that, uh, this way up. I'm going to fit the washers back on. You'll see how it's a slotted design. Uh, it goes all the way in. So it's only, uh, it goes one way or the other. Um, so then when I refit it, I'm going to clean these up, but then I'll know it's the right position. And you'll see the mark that I put on the washer there. Um, so that's when I, I refit it, I'll be able to realign it. Um, and then this one goes on that way, like that. And it had uh, the washer, was on the end on that side of the, um, the wishbone, and then it had the nut on the end. So, as you see, because of the position of the washers, sets the different camber, so it's how your wheel goes this way and that way. This is the wishbone. So these are the bushes that we're going to, re going to replace. And on the other side, uh, you'll see it's a bit rusty. So I'll clean all this up. But there's two um, welds. So one on that side and one on that side. So I need to grind those off first. Then I can knock these out or press them out. We'll see which one's best. Um, and then I can fit the new ones in. And you can see the cracks to the, the bush there, look. So, Time to time to go and be changed over. Um, the actual sleeves themselves look okay, but the rubber it's, um, has perished. So I'm just going to show you the mount. So it's an oval um, where the bolt goes through, and then you can see the uh, where the washer sits in and uh, rotates around. And that's the other side. It's a bit, a bit rusty, so I need to clean all that up, uh, give it a bit of a spray. Um, but it doesn't look like it's, uh, it's deformed in any way, so that's good. So there are two bushes, so you can see that it all deteriorated and just worn away, so time to be replaced. Uh, both sides are exactly the same. Uh, the inner sleeves look okay, but it's just the rubber, it's just completely gone. Um, on the mount, um, the inside of this is fine. Um, you can see where the spot, um, the uh, weld was, spot weld was, uh, just there. So that's where I've ground it off and on the other side, just here as well. So. Um, these look fine I think um, I'll clean these up clean this up um, and paint it before we go any do anything with it um, just want to show the the new one in comparison so that is our power flex version um, you can see much higher um, so it's uh, I imagine that's just shrunk over time um, and then yeah it's, uh, it's it's a bit more narrow you can't really tell there let me see if I can do it back to side to side. Different shape, but the same functionality. So yeah, next is to clean this up, uh, paint it, and then we can look at refitting everything. Excellent. Um, 
So uh, I'm going to be welding this onto here. So that's going to be interesting. Um, so looking at the, the bushes, they've all got uh, cracks in them. They're knackered. Time to, time to go. What I did is cut one in half so you can see inside. Da -da -da. How exciting. So uh, I, I sliced it. Um, and that's how it works. So you can see the how the rubber goes in all the way around. And then you've got like the inner sleeve. Um, I think this one pops out. Let's see if I can do it. There we go. So the, there's the top bit. There's a rubber on that part. And then the that's the sleeve. The inner bit of that. And then you've got the rubber that runs all the way around the edge of there. Um, so yeah, it's all really thin and started to really perish. So time to time to get rid of all those and have our new ones. Um, and these are our new parts in comparison. So that's like the inner part. And then that's the the outer outer part of the bush. Um, and then uh, that's the, the rubber part. So what I'm gonna do now is um, press these in and then I'm gonna weld it. Let's see how we get on. So they're all painted up now. I'm going to fit the outer sleeves, <clears throat> so they go in that way. I'm going to press them in using the vise. Um, I've got this, which is uh, from the uh, the manual press. This is one of the rings that, that, that came with that, so that fits over that bit. Um, and then I can squeeze it in the vise, and that will push it in straight. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to do now. You'll be pleased to see that the vise is now on an actual work table which makes it far easier. Both sides are all the way in now. So I just need to clean up this bit of paint that's, um, that's been pushed through. And then what I'm gonna do is just file away a bit of the mount to remove the paint on yeah, the mount point and the, uh, the outer sleeve as well. Um, just so I've got clean metal to put the weld on. So I'm gonna be using my new Clark Weld 151 Turbo. Um, and I've got a new um, regulator on top because I think the, the one it comes with is a bit of rubbish. Um, so yeah, I've got the, uh, my welding mask, my gloves um, and the torch. So I've been testing it different welds, so different wire speed, different power, um, to try and um, anticipate what it's going to be like when I weld the, um, the wishbone. So I'm hoping for something like this. Nice, nice bit of penetration um, without it splattering when the wire speed was too fast. So um, hopefully I get something like this. to show you how terrible that one was. It looks like bird poo. I'm just going to grind that off and then try again. Yeah, the same on this side as well. So you see these welds are coming away. So there's not enough penetration on the mount and the, the sleeve itself. That looks loads better. Actually got penetration on all sides. Excellent. The first welds didn't penetrate the steel sleeve at all. So when I knock them off, there's just nothing to show at all on there. Um, you can see when I whack the power up on the on the, the welder, that's the first time I actually got any penetration. So you can see it coming through on this side. And there's heat penetration there, so um, Although it's still not the best, uh, it will do the trick, I think. Uh, it seems to seems to be solid, that one, compared to the other ones I had. Um, on this side, not so good. It's a bit of a mess, but it works. Um, but my first foray into welding, so forgive me. <laughs> so this just pushes inside. 
and then we use the the grease to go in this side where the sleeve will hit. Now the uh, the newer uh, versions of this on the, on the Powerflex site, um, the washer and the inner sleeve are separate pieces, um, whereas the one I've got it's the same. So I don't know what difference that makes, if any. That goes in. There we go. These are the original eccentric washers that are on the van. Um, they're a bit corroded. Uh, they probably would clean up all right, but I'm going to replace them anyway with these stainless steel ones from Rickworks. So these are laser cut um, and they won't rust because they're stainless steel. So what I'm going to do is mark where I made indentations on the originals so I can set the, the camber to roughly the same setting. Um, so when I take it for alignment, um, it should be roughly okay um, and should get me there at least. So I'm just going to uh, mark on these so just line that up and where I made the uh, indentation there I'm just going to put a mark so I can see that when I'm putting them on. What I found with these new ones is they're a bit tight going on and um, so when you're trying to slide this on underneath the van it's quite difficult so what I'm going to do is just um, file away a bit of the inside on both sides and that will just give me enough clearance to slide it um, back and forth on there. There we go, the slide on fine now. To make adjustments uh, and when we're tightening it up, there's a 14 millimeter hex on this end. So if you have a drain plug like this, uh, one end's got 14 millimeter and the other one 17, that works quite well. So first I put the washers in place on either side. And slide this in position. You've got to align the bar with the washer at this point in there, um, so it takes a bit of fiddling. And you've got to do the same on this side as well, um, so it pushes through. So the marker line we had before we took it all off was with this dot at the bottom here. So we want to align our mark. Now at the moment it will move freely because it's not tightened up, so we just need to tighten this nut up first and then we can adjust it using the hex. So this is 19 millimeter this one. So the washer's no longer moving when I move this so I can adjust the hex on the other side. So the mark's up there and we need to move it down here. So that's roughly set to what it was when we took everything off. So I can tighten up the, um, the nut on the other side now. There's not enough clearance here for me to fit my torque wrench in. Um, so this is uh, supposed to be tightened up to 75 newton meters, which is very tight. So I've done it as tight as I can. Um, hopefully that'll be okay. You can see this all moves freely now. You can see the the washer stays in position, the sleeve moves. So I just need to do these two bolts on here now and then that's all back in position. So it's an eight millimeter hex on these ones. I need tightening up to 60 newton meters. Back in position. I'm going to do a basic alignment when I get the wheel back on to get the camber back to zero if I can uh, before taking it for a proper alignment. Um, but yeah, that was uh, not as painful as I thought it would be. I'm using this to see if it's level across this front axle so you can see the water automatically levels itself out 
Um, so I'm going to check if it's um, level across this side, across to the other. Um, and if it's not, I can shim it up um, to get it to the same height. And then I can set the camber. On this side, it's just about eight. On this side, it's just over six, so 6.4. Um, so this side is higher than the other side, so I need to shim the other, the other wheel up. So I'm going to use a block of wood that size uh, underneath that wheel to raise this side. So I've put these bolts through this bar um, so it can touch against this inner edge just there. The idea is I can get a measurement of whether this is zero degrees, which is what we're trying to get to. I've got a digital gauge that tells us whether it's straight or not. Um, so I'm just going to go down the middle for a start. Just make sure that bit's straight. Right. And then we're looking at this one here. I kid you not, I don't know how this has happened, but it's at zero. So there's no point in me adjusting anything. That's good enough for me. So I could um, <clears throat> get in there and adjust if I needed to, um, to, to move this camber this way and that. Uh, but that's, I'm quite happy with that, to be honest. So there we go. I did some welding and I didn't blow up the van, <laughs> which is really good. Um, and I didn't die either. Um, so I'll definitely be doing more welding in the future. Um, I know those welds weren't the best, but they'll hold, which is the most important thing. You know, they're so simple with those spot welds. Um, but yeah, that was a really interesting experience. The rest of it, really straightforward doing this job. Um, it's, it wasn't as complex as I thought it would be, um, apart from grinding off those bits and welding the new uh, bushings in place. That's, you know, that's the most complex part of it. Um, setting the camber i know i'm going to get some uh, comments on on that and you won't believe that <laughs> it was zero degrees but it was you know it's a, it's a rudimentary system i've used uh with the uh, using the water level to to shim up the uh to shim up the yeah the van to make sure it was level and then using the digital gauge for that but you know it, it works it's it, we're using science and mathematics for those um so yeah it's uh it's as good as it needs to be, I think, for me to get before I get the proper alignment done. Um, but yeah, it was <laughs> it was very interesting doing all that. So for the uh, uh, the Powerflex kit, so is it worth two hundred pounds? Because that's how much it is at the moment. And that's a lot, isn't it? You're talking like fifty pounds for each bush, uh, which is really expensive. When when you think about like the the other ones that are available, the normal rubber ones, are about £15 pounds each. It's a, I got these um, on eBay uh, by, you know, from a seller who uh, had bought it but then never used them, so um, they're essentially second hand but never used. So I got them for about £80, pounds, I think, um, which, it, which is reasonable, I think, that amount. Um, but normally, £200 pounds for that set, I don't think I would have spent that amount of money. Um, so yeah, I'll leave it up to you to decide whether you want to spend that amount of money on it. The only benefit is the fact that when you're welding the spot welds on, um, you're not going to melt the bush because it's um, it's all separate. So the rubber bush will be, you know, will remain, uh, it, you know, won't get too hot. So uh, I suppose when you're doing it, you could have a bucket of water to. to uh, cold water that you could dip them in as soon as you're in the well, that will cool it down again. So that's the only um, real benefit of them, I think. Uh, but yeah, easy to fit, easy job. There we go, don't have to do that again for a long, long time. You know, these, uh, I suppose, with, with again, with Powerflex, they, they're lifetime, aren't they? So I don't have to do that again. Um, so yeah, let me know your thoughts and comments below, and please like and subscribe as well. Bye-bye.